Hello and welcome to our webinar today entitled Nutrition for Injury Prevention with McGill Dietetic Intern, Cherry Zhu. Cherry will be explaining the basics of nutrition for injury prevention, which involves strategies for recovery after your training and general nutrition habits that have been shown to help decrease inflammation and promote health and performance. Cherry will be preparing an Asian fried rice recipe. This session is being recorded. Please add your questions in the chat and we will have an unrecorded question and answer time at the end of the session. Thanks, Cherry, for preparing this session for us and we look forward to learning from you today. Okay, um, thank you, Pia, for introducing me. And uh, hello, everyone. So I would like to credit Romo Chang, who is also a dietetic student at McGill, because some of these slides have been adapted from his previous session on nutrition for injury prevention. So uh, here's our plan for today. First, I will give you some ideas about the prevalence of sport injury and share some statistics. Then it will be all about omega-3 and their health benefits. So why are they important and where can you find them? And I will end, uh, even share with you a delicious recipe to inspire you on how to include omega-3 rich foods into your daily eating practices. After that, I will be able to talk about some other nutrients of concern that could help to prevent sport injury, such as carbohydrate, protein, calcium, and vitamin D. And finally, I will explain how alcohol could actually affect sport performance and injury. Throughout the session, I will have some pop-up polling questions so that we can have more of an interactive learning session. So before we get started, I already have a poll question for you. So have you ever suffered from a sport injury? Yes or no? Think about it. Now, I got one just to test your knowledge. So on average, how often do you think university level student athletes get injured? A, is it at least one times per year? B, at least two times per year? Three, at least three times per year? Or D, at least four times per year? So the answer is at least two times per year, which is quite often. No, uh, injury affect almost everyone at some point in your life. And here I've got some more statistics about injury prevalence. Actually, 20% of active adults have had at least one injury. And if we look more specifically into university level athletes, over 90% of them have had at least one injury in their career. And you know, in Canada, 30% of injuries happen during the participation in some sort of sport or exercise. And at least one of every five emergency department visit is for an injury that has resulted from participating in some sort or sport or recreation. So now we know that sport injury is something that happens very often, but why would it be, why would it be important to prevent it? Um, well, first of all, the injury could really affect your performance. It may cause you to miss trainings. It could take a long time for you to recover. You know, the benefits of exercise and sport are not permanent. For example, if you stop going to the gym for a while and lay mainly on your bed or stay home watching TV, you will lose much of the muscles that you have. And research has also shown that getting a sport injury could affect one's mental status. Um, one might feel more sadness, isolation, and irritation. Maybe you can't even play, which um, and then, you know you'll be. Uh, only able to watch others have fun. It might also cause you to have more mood disturbance and lower self-esteem. Furthermore, it could even be 
economic burden, you know, for the costs associated with healthcare. So with all these in mind, I guess you want to be uh, better safe than sorry. So now let's not further wait to explore uh, ways to prevent injury and I'll start with omega-3. Um, okay, hmm. you might be wondering what is actually omega-3. It is actually a type of unsaturated fatty acid, so it's different than the saturated and trans fat that we hear about often as the one you want to limit or avoid. It is also an essential fatty acid. This means that your body needs it, needs it uh, but it cannot make it on its own. So you must get it from your diet, from eating, and from the food. There's actually three types of omega-3. You've got ALA, the DHA, and the EPA. Now that we have an idea of what omega-3 is, the question now is, how does it prevent injury? So actually, it has been uh, it has beneficial effect on your heart and brain. It reduces the risk of blood clot and lower blood pressure. It's, uh, it also has beneficial effect on your muscles and joints because it has an anti-inflammatory property. You know, oxidative stress builds up during exercise. And omega-3 can lessen these oxidative damage and help to prevent chronic inflammation. And in addition to this, it could also speed up the process of recovery post-workouts. And here are some other benefits of omega-3 in terms of sport performance. Some studies have shown that it helps with strength and power because omega-3 can help to increase the rate of muscle synthesis, so muscle gain. Um, it seems to also help with endurance exercise due to a increased blood flow of oxygen into muscles during exercise. And other than that, omega-3 also might play a role in mental health some studies suggest that it could improve depression, hyperactivity, or bipolar disorder. And some other studies suggest possible delaying of Alzheimer's disease um, or bipolar disorder. Uh, sorry, or, um, or mild cognitive disorder. So uh, remember that I mentioned previously that there is three types of omega-3. DHA and EPA are the types where you would get most of the benefits of omega-3, like for the heart, the brain, muscles, and joints. So these ones are mainly found in fatty fish. On the other side, you've got the ALA, uh, which has less of those beneficial effects from omega-3. However, they can be converted into DHA and EPA by our body, but in very small quantities. So these ALA uh, type of omega-3 are mainly found in plant sources like black seed, uh, chia seeds, walnuts, and soybean derived products like edamame and tofu. So here are examples of food sources of DHA and EPA. Like I said earlier, the most well-known sources are fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, trout, sardine, and tuna. However, for those of you who might dislike fish or vegetarian, seaweed and kelp are excellent plant-based sources of DHA and EPA. Okay, uh, over here, I got some more examples of omega-3 rich foods. You can uh, you know, make better choices of fats and oil. For example, canola oil is just super rich in omega-3. Um, oh, did you know that uh, where, it's, where it's actually, why it's called canola oil? Uh, and that's because, uh, okay, so can stands for Canada. And OLA stands for 
oil. So this is actually a Canadian oil. So it's a proud uh, Canadian product. Also, uh, remember that I, that I said flaxseed and soybean are good sources of omega-3. Or the uh, oil version, flaxseed oil and soybean oil are also great source. Um, and then here you have uh, some fortified food that could be rich in omega-3. Uh, you can find omega-3 eggs or even some margarines that uh, are high in omega-3 as well. Okay, so it seems to me that by now uh, we should have a pretty good idea of what foods are high in omega-3. Now we're moving toward the more fun part, so our continuing session. But before that, uh, I'll still need to go through some food and kitchen safety guidelines. First of all, make sure to wash your hands thoroughly with soaps for at least 20 seconds, both before and after preparation. Make sure to avoid cross-contamination. You should use uh, different cotton boards and put wear for walk versus ready to eat or cook food. Um, and do not forget to clean and disinfect at home. Uh, you can use Lysol wipes. As for kitchen safety, uh, you should tie your long hair if you have. Make sure to use proper cutting techniques with uh, hands indented like this. Um, so in the shape of claw to avoid uh, your fingers from being cut. You should also know their nearest emergency exit and have the first aid kits available. And obviously, you can't miss out on the temperature danger zone when talking about food safety. So the temperature danger zone is anywhere between 4 to 60 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature range where bacteria loss and start to multiply very quickly. So we want to avoid these uh, temperature range as much as possible. Okay, uh, what's as much as possible? And the answer is no more than two hours. So you should not leave food at room temperatures for more than two hours. And because the recipe that I'll be sharing with you today is for three large portions, I like to mention um, about some safe food storage methods. So uh, any ready to eat food or leftovers should be put on the top shelf and the raw meats, poultry and fish should be put on a lower shelf so that uh, you know, in case of a spillage of raw meat juices, you don't uh, like contaminate the whole fridge. Um, and you should not reheat food more than once. So make sure to only reheat what you the amount that you'll be eating to avoid any waste. Uh -huh. And there is also uh, such things as a safe microwave microwave reheating method. So you should loosen the lid to allow steam to escape. You should also open the cap like away from you to prevent steam from burning your face. And very important here, stop the microwave halfway when you're reheating and stir so that you can get an even distribution of the heat and not end up, you know, with uh, some parts that are burning hot and some that are still very cold. So um, I make sure that it reaches at least 74 degrees Celsius. Okay, um, so finally, uh, I think we are uh, ready to get to the ingredients. Uh, for this recipe, you will need some omega-3 eggs, brown rice, deveined shrimp, frozen veggies. Uh, I will be using a mixture of corn, carrots, and peas. You will also need some frozen edamame that are cooked uh, and with the shell removed some green onions, some Canadian oil, low salt soy sauce, oyster sauce, sesame oil, and some roasted seaweed. 
As for uh, kitchen tools, you will need a rice cooker or steamer to cook the rice, a frying pan, some me measuring cups and spoon, and a cutting board and knife, as well as some bowls. Okay, <laughs> now we're truly ready for our recipe. So it's a omega-3 Asian style fried rice. And I'll start this video right here. So you need uh, two cups of cooked brown rice. You need two and a half cups of frozen veg veggies. Uh, one cup of frozen edamame. Now we're using some omega-3 eggs and we'll need three of them. Need 150 grams of even fish, some canola oil, uh, 15 ml of light soy sauce, oyster sauce, and 5 ml of sesame oil, half a cup of seaweed, three green onions that you need to wash very properly, and to cut it into little, um, little slices, and make sure to use the proper cutting technique. Now we can pre-mix our soya sauce, so it was 15 ml, and our oyster sauce, which was also 15 ml, so a tablespoon, and mix it well, very well. Now I'm just loosening up uh, some of the rice so that it will be easier to stir fry. And at this point, you can uh, beat your egg lightly. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed together. So just lightly, it's fine. You can add half of your green onions to the egg and give it a little twist again. So I'm turning the heat here on the high and waited for the oil to uh, to heat up. And after that, I put the eggs inside. And you can just stir lightly to get a soft curd. <laughs> this step shouldn't take uh, very long. It should only be like around 15 seconds or 20 seconds. And at this point, you can add your shrimp and stir fry for 10 or 15 seconds. After that, uh, you can add your frozen edamame and stir fry it again. Um, and here it's our frozen vegetable mixtures. If you are in a rush, you can add all of them, all of these veggies together. There's actually no problem with that at all. So I stir fry it for a bit, like uh, 30 seconds. And now I am adding our brown rice. Add it to the pot, stir fry again. Very simple, just to make sure that uh, you you stir fry it very well, so that the rice gets a good even distribution of the heat. So that takes around a minute or two, and at this point, you can add the soya and oyster sauce mixture. And mix it again. For around 10, 15 seconds again. And here lastly, I'm topping it with our 5 ml, so our teaspoon of sesame oil. So a little mix, 5 10 seconds again, and we should be good. 
So don't remember, uh, don't forget to turn the heat off. Here, uh, I put our rice in a bowl to get that pretty shape. And you can decorate the sides with some shredded seaweeds that we have. And at the end, you can top it with the other half of so the leftover green onions that we didn't use. And there you go. Uh -huh. So um, that recipe that I just shared with you do have some common allergens and I got some alternatives that you can use. If you have a allergy to shrimp, you can use firm tofu instead. Instead, you can also add some beans or extra eggs. So feel free to play around with the sources of protein and omega-3. If you have a allergy to sesame, you can totally skip the sesame oil since we are just using it you know, uh, as a final touch and in very minimal amount. And for those of you who might have celiac disease or a gluten intolerance, you can go for gluten-free soy sauce or even just replace the soy sauce and oyster sauce with salt. Actually, from the part of China where I come from, a traditional fried rice with egg doesn't have any soy or oyster sauce. So this is also very optional. Okay, uh, and I also encourage you to play around with the veggie mixture to your preference. So go for diversity. These are just some order, other choices of frozen veggies. Make sure um, um, among those that I saw at Walmart. Uh, so for this one uh, on the left, you know, it, it's a high fiber mixture with edamame already in it. So our high Omega-3 foods, uh, like with some beans, corn, peppers, and broccoli. So play around with that. Mm. Uh, here I have the cost of our recipe. So it comes to $4.55 for the entire recipe. And the recipe was, was for three portions. So basically, it's only about $1.60 per serving. And the usual price of a similar dish at the restaurant is about $4.50 to $10. So the homemade option was so much cheaper and even much more nutrient dense and nutritionally balanced. You know, at the restaurant, they would have much more oil, much less vegetables, and it would be mostly done with white rice and definitely not with omega-3 ants. So even, even if you are not a fan of brown rice, this recipe is a good way to start introducing it into your diet because it's not plain. It's being well flavored and stir fried, so you don't really taste the difference. Um, uh, you can even start with half right or half brown if, uh, if you've never tried it before. Um, you know, my dad, he has been eating rice his entire life. So he's very biased on the idea of, of eating brown rice. But this recipe, he enjoyed it. And he didn't even realize that it was brown rice. Um, and uh, another thing that I wanted to point out is actually how cheap this meal is. A big part of the reason is because we use frozen vegetables instead of fresh ones. And you know, frozen veggies and frozen food can be just as healthy, as healthy as the fresh ones. So, and here is the food. So uh, for a serving size of two cups, 500 ml, you get 1.3 grams of omega-3, which is a lot. And it meets all the daily requirements for women in terms of omega-3. You also get a lot of fiber and protein. So when looking at a nutrition fact table, anything under 5% is a little, and anything over 15% is a lot. So you like to go for a little of 
salt and saturated fat, and a lot of proteins and fiber. Here we have 32% fiber, which is a lot, and 58% protein, which is also a lot, a lot. <laughs> but this is very nutritious. Um, and on top of that, this meal respects the idea of a balanced plate. Good nutrition plays a role in injury prevention. And, you know, adequate consumption of omega-3 is important. But ultimately, it's the overall diet that we should really emphasize, not just meeting the needs of one specific nutrient. It is uh, to achieve an overall good balance, and this can be done by following this balance plate idea, which is also proposed by the new Canadian food diet. Basically, uh, so basically, this is how a nutritious uh, or balanced meal should look like. Half of your plate should consist of vegetables and fruits. One quarter of it uh, should be starch, favoring whole grains, and the other quarter of proteins. Um, hmm. So here is a side-by-side -side view of our fried rice next to the balanced plate. And as you can see, um, we have our veggie mixtures and amami seaweed covering half our plate of um, veggies. We had brown rice covering one quarter of it. And we got eggs plus shrimp as protein covering the remaining quadrants. Uh, add a little cup of water to that and there you go. You have the perfectly balanced meal right there. And we also, um, we also use a good choice of oil. Remember the Canadian one. <laughs> um, so now I have I have a polling question for you to test your knowledge. So, which of uh, the ingredients from the Asian style fried rice recipe is not a good source of omega three? Is it a seaweed, the brown rice? C shrimp, D edamame, or E canola oil. So the correct answer was actually brown rice. So brown rice is not high in uh, omega three, but even though it's not rich in, in omega three, it's still a very good food to include in your diet because it contains a lot of fiber which is good for the heart and bowel health as well okay so that was it for omega-3 and the balanced plate now i will bring you to other nutrients of concern for injury prevention first of all we got the carbohydrates and protein so carbohydrates are the primary source of energy for your muscles and brain. And they can be stored uh, in the muscles as glycogen, but these stores are low, so it's important to replenish them. And muscles uh, glycogen depletion is associated with fatigue and injury. So getting enough carbs is essential. Protein, on the other side, is required for muscle maintenance, growth, and repair after exercise. Okay, so studies show that a combination of carbs and protein before and after exercise prevent injury. So carbs one to two hours before exercise help um, to maintain sufficient fuel for muscles during exercise. On the other side, protein three to four hours after exercise, along with some carbs and protein directly after exercise, like within 30 minutes, will help you to better recover from your session and prevent any injuries for your next session. And for more details and idea of what you should eat, for what, uh, for what kind of exercise, I encourage you to listen to this session about nutrition for performance. 
Um, if you were not able to attend it, it's now available online, so check it out. It was a very great session done by my colleague, me. Okay, so now we are moving to calcium and vitamin D, which are required for bone health. Athletes are actually more prone to fractures and calcium plus vitamin D has been shown to prevent fractures as an all age. Calcium is actually, uh, actually builds and maintains bones. 99% of them is in our bone and teeth. So they also enables your muscles to contract. If we don't get enough of it from the food, our body will pick it up from the bones. And if this is done you know, constantly in the long run, then you'll, you'll get weaker bones for sure. And you'll be much prone uh, to risk of fractures. As for uh, vitamin D, it helps with uh, calcium absorption. So um, you know, these two, calcium and vitamin D, are very important in combo, and both are very important for the bones. So here are a list of food sources of calcium and vitamin D. Dairy products like milk, cheese, yogurt are a very good source of both calcium and vitamin D. On the other side, dark green leafy uh, vegetables as well as tofu are good in calcium but they don't contain much vitamin D. And on the other side, fatty fish are good sources of vitamin D and not too much in calcium. But if you get fish with bones like uh, sardine, it will be a great source of both calcium and vitamin D. Okay, uh, now, lastly, I want to talk about how alcohol can really impair sport performance and recovery. So alcohol is actually a diuretic, which means that it causes your body to lose more fluid so it can cause dehydration. Alcohol also impairs your cognitive function. So that along with dehydration, you get a impaired balance, impaired muscle contraction, coordination, uh, headache and lower level of alertness, which can really affect your performance and put you at risk of injury. And in addition, we know how staying well hydrated before, during, as well as after physical activity is so important. So alcohol is not really athlete friendly. Also, uh, you know, it impairs your ability to refuel the energy your ability to repair the muscle damage after exercise. And it can also impair your sleep quality, which again is the time where you get rest and recovery. Uh, I know that some of you in a still have a social life and you just can't completely avoid uh, alcohol. What you can do is to drink while following the Canada's low risk alcohol drinking guideline, which says that women should get less than 10 drinks per week with no more than two drinks per day. A man should get less than 15 drinks per week with no more than three drinks per day. So now what does a drink mean? Okay, uh, an equivalent of one drink is the following. It can be uh, 30, 340 ml of beer, Cooler, so anything, um, oh, sorry, uh, anything around 5% alcohol. It could also be 140 ml or 5 ounces of wine, that is 12% alcohol. And also uh, 40 ml or 1.5 ounces of distilled alcohol, that is 40%. To summarize, today we saw how sport injury was very common. So we explored many nutrients of concern that could help to prevent sport injury. We looked at omega-3 and their benefits. We went through a cool recipe that is 
quick, easy, cheap, omega-3 rich, balanced, and super delicious. Then I talk about the importance of carbs and proteins both before and after meals, as well as the role of calcium and vitamin D in keeping your bones strong to prevent fat choice. At the end, I provided you some safe drinking guidelines because alcohol could also impair all aspects of sport performance and recovery process. Now it's quiz time. So this is the now a pool question, true or false type. So good hydration is important to prevent sport injury. Alcohol could be a great way for rehydration, but only after exercise. Is that A, true or B, false? Um, the answer is actually false because alcohol is a diuretic, so that causes your body to ultimately lose more water. Second one, um, this one is a uh, mise en situation type of question. So you got Amy who is uh, eating some pasta for lunch. However, she kind of reheated too much of it, so she couldn't finish the whole plate. And you know, she didn't want to waste anything, so she decided to put it back into a container and store it in the fridge so that she can eat it again later tonight. By doing so, Amy is following the food safety guideline. Is that A true or B false? So the answer is false because you should not reheat any food more than once. Um, the, the food wouldn't have been probably exposed in the temperature danger zone for uh, of like 4 to 4, 60 degrees Celsius for too long. Um, yeah. Now, so last one uh, to test your knowledge, uh, which nutrition strategy can prevent sport injury? A, incorporating omega-3 in the diet, B, eating at balanced plate, C, adequate carbohydrate and protein, D, adequate calcium and vitamin C, E, alcohol in moderation, or F, all of the above. So the answer is all of the above. These are all things that we have discussed today. And um, so, yeah, thank you everyone for listening and participating. Thank you, Cherry. So thanks for preparing that recipe for us and all the great content. And we hope that you'll join us for other webinars in the future and view our Perform blog page. And we also have a dedicated webinar page now for previous Perform content. This concludes the recorded portion of the webinar and we'll have some time for questions.